like let's come up with a score that it didn't matter what your level of understanding about soil was you come out with a pretty close score so they trialed this with thousands of people like school kids adults scientists the whole lot and had a look at you know can we score a soil and then if you're able to score your soil then it becomes easier to come back replicate it and look at am I improving or declining. Now this is the perfect time of the year to do it. You want to do it when the plants are in that active growing phase. So we don't do this say in the middle of summer because you're not going to count worms either in the middle of summer. You want to do it when the plants are actively growing. So I'm going to give you guys these score sheets and you're going to do this for yourself. So um, well, that's what I want to say about the booklet. There are four different booklets. So this one was actually designed for pastures so it's not the one for cropping. So I'm sorry about that but we can still use it, but there is a cropping one, so it actually has a look at you know, what's happening with soil structure and the rest. So the first thing we're going to look at is soil texture. So what is soil texture? Part of percentage of sand, soil and clay. Yeah, your sand, silt and clay. All right, so we have two types of soil texture here we're going to measure. We're going to measure the stuff that's right up the top, and then we're going to look at the textural group, which is deeper down. So we go down 200 millimetres. What's that? Yeah, yeah, what's eight, eight, eight inches? Eight, eight inches. Eight inches. And then down at that eight inch de depth, we're going to just take an inch and roll that to try and figure out what, what's the textural group like, what's the parent material here is. Are we sitting on top of clay? Are we sitting on top of sand or gravel or whatever? And um, on your score chart, that actually goes at the top of the page is what is your textural group. So there's not... There's a score card in here and the textural group is at the top. So that's the parent material and then you have what is your soil texture. And then they're weighted. So you put in the score, let's say it is a silt loam, a sandy loam. Then it gets a score of 1. So you're going to put the score of 1 in there and you go 1 times 3 equals 3. Alright, so then you put that score in there. Because um, I can't find, I've actually printed these sheets off, I don't know where they are. I've given you blank sheets, so maybe don't write on this. Just write on your blank sheet and um, yeah, get the, the right. times. And then the next one we look at is soil structure. How do we assess soil structure? Slump test. Yeah, well, drop test. Yeah, we're going to do the drop test. All right, so we're actually going to, we're going to pick up a 200 millimeter, so an 8 inch by 8 inch sample. These are not normally the spades or shovels, so we call them spades. I don't know. <laughs> we normally use it like the, the, the square base, 200, it's 200 millimeter wide. Shh, shh. Shovel, the shovel? Shovel. 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 Okay. And so then we go spade, so it's 200 by 200 by 200. So all of the soil that we're going to cut are going to be that width. So with this one, which is not 200, we're just going to have to do it. We can kind of guess about about 8 inches. And yeah, and go one and a half, which is going to make it. That is quite um. Yeah. So we're going to do it like one and a half, and then when I'm. This shouldn't be too hard at all. When I'm doing that, one thing that's really helpful to be able to pull that soil out is I do a slice. Once I've done my square, I do a slice here that I remove. So I pull this bit out first. Ooh, look at that. What are those? What's those layers? Compaction. Compaction. Alright, so we can see that yeah. that's that feel that we were kind of getting. Alright, there, there, there's, there's just that layer through there. So when we break a soil open, should never do that. Should never. Should. Alright, so <laughs> we want to see a soil that really is got that, that aggregation and that crumb structure when we break it apart. Um, there's some pretty good aggregation. That's kind of what you want the whole soil to look like, right. kind of. So it's one of the indicators for, we talked about, uh, are we bacterial or fungal, is how does that soil aggregate? So who makes the fine aggregates? Um, insects. I'm guessing bacteria. It's bacteria, bacteria, right? They make the little, little fine stuff. Oops. Sorry. Like a soil like that, without the crumbs would be bacterial, just bacteria dominated. And then as we start to build more aggregation, you might see around the root system, hopefully. Yeah. Actually, not really. <laughs> no. So the clumps, that kind of 
Aggregation is what we want to see along all the roots and for those roots to be really sticky and not clean. Okay, so it's one indicator that the fungi isn't really working very well in this system. And if that's not working so well, then your nitrogen cycle is not working as well either. So we know about um, rhizobia. Yeah, so we know about nodules on clovers. Yeah, so that the rhizobia make those nodules. Right, what happens inside those nodules is it's actually anaerobic. Right, and those organisms need it to be, the bacteria need it to be anaerobic to do the nitrogen fixation process. Right, the same thing will actually happen inside these aggregates attached to the roots. Okay, so it's an indicator if we've got lovely, you know, like a lot of aggregation or those Rastafarian roots, <laughs> then uh, we've got the nitrogen cycle working. If, however, it's very fine like this and we're not seeing a lot of aggregation, it tells us that nitrogen cycle is not working optimally. That's not too bad. Um, so, just talking with Nick, one of the things that they're having an issue with is early in the season, this sort of breakdown of material starts happening and it's robbing nitrogen out of the system. All right, so there, but you can see that. So this, this soil, in, just for the quick analysis, definitely seems to me like it's more bacterial than it needs to be for vegetable production. All right, they need a little bit more fungi in here. Can you say that again about the, about the, that the breakdown is happening? Yeah, like so... the litter is breaking down early in the season and that's, an index, that's not a good thing? It's robbed. So who feeds first is the microbes and then they feed the plant. But they're the first ones that eat at the table. So, so you've got a carbon to nitrogen imbalance, so they're putting on um, a compost mm -hmm. that is obviously still breaking down or something's happening, but also because they're trying to do the crimping, and this is where organic, we find, can be a challenge, you're crimping organic material and then planting a the next crop into it, that organic material starts to break down first, and it takes nitrogen out of the soil to do that. So unless your nitrogen cycle is working really well, now we're in a situation of going, oh, oh we're going to have to add some nitrogen. If it's green and succulent like this, <coughs> doesn't that release more nitrogen into the system? Quickly? Yep, yep, okay. But still... And if this, this, if this crop, had instead of being rye, had, had legume in it, then you would have fixed more nitrogen? Yes, for the following crop. Right. right. But diversity is what we need in these systems. So what Gabe Brown's doing is armor and diversity, right? And getting as much biomass and then get some livestock in here. And get animals into the system and trample it. Get some you know, like uh, cattle have this and sheep have this amazing ability to spread protozoa. It's all over their tongues and they lick you. Mm, protozoa. All right, so that's that nutrient cycling. So right now what we have is bacteria and what is it doing? robbing a plant? It's immobilizing it. Yeah. All right, we talked right. about it yesterday. We've got a whole That's lot right. of bacteria. Who was the bacteria yesterday? Marilyn. <laughs> Weren't you? No. Yeah. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. 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 Was. The chocolate hog. You the were the protozoa. Hog, all right, and so that bacteria's got all the nitrogen in its body. When we're in a bacterial-dominated system, it's not giving it up. Okay, so who gives it up? They've got some biochar in here. Yes. Um, who gives it up is the protozoa, all right? And when we have a system that's very um, bacterial dominated and we haven't got that whole system running, you haven't got the protozoa, we don't have nutrient cycling working. So nobody's eating the bacteria. Nobody's eating the bacteria to go give it up, give yeah. it to the plant, right. give them your nitrogen and your phosphate and your zinc and your sulfur, all right? So yeah. we're seeing nutrient deficiencies in here because we haven't got that full kaleidoscope. Yeah. Of activity, yeah. right? So they could be here just at low levels, but clean roots are never. You want dirty mm. roots. Mm. Yeah. And so Sticky roots. If, if there was less disturbance, perhaps. I mean, I guess we don't know, right? Um, well, but we, if, did, we do. We do because it's good in the Right. So we can we assume that because there's so much disturbance, the secondary and tertiary organisms aren't sticking around. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. So the first ones that leave the building are the really good beneficial ones. Right, and this is only. I think this is only. Field, yeah. But growing vegetables in a tillage system is always going to be a challenge to do what you're talking about. No, you then need to feed your microbes. 
right? So every action you think, how do I feed those guys? You know, so we put some fungi in here. We know we've got a nitrogen issue. I'd be fish. I'm oh, definitely putting fish in here. Feed the fungi. Hyd hydrolyzed fish. Yeah. As opposed to micronized. Yeah. 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 So fish hydrolyzate for sure. But Which is the dried. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Neptune has it. Well, we want you to get some yeah. I know you, you do. do. I know you do. But All right. The, um, so um, he's going to cut this. He's going to drill down this field, and the nitrogen from this rye is going to be added. So that's, that's right. going to help his next crop. In. Uh, no. No, it's it's because be by the time tough. it's the next crop, you've got this oxidizing as well so i mean yeah. this is not contributing to his organic matter it's not adding to carbon it's adding up there so you don't think because he's going to transplant broccoli into here right? that's right so you don't think this rye will add nitrogen to that to that uh some will come off the roots but a lot of it actually it's going to respire he's going to roller it did you say he's going to no rolling. he's going to roll it he's going to roll it, roll it. Gonna roll it. Yeah. With a, a crimper yeah okay he's going to Okay, so we're then going to look at porosity, right? So we cut the side of that soil and have a look at is there really good porosity or is that soil really, really tight? Um, it's a bit difficult in here because we haven't, you can see it's not crumbed, so I certainly wouldn't be giving it a two. I wouldn't be giving it an excellent. I want to see it look like chocolate cake or a black, dark uh, cottage cheese. All right, then we look at things called mottles, all right? So mottles are. Um, you know, you get those big orange flecks in it, so there's streaks, and you get black dots oh. here, so like your manganese, so it's iron oxide, so when the water comes up and then retreats, that iron goes into solution, reacts with the oxygen, and makes the iron oxides. So we're not seeing it here, but if we went down the bottom where it's a bit wet, we might see mm -hmm. it down there. So that's a good thing? Or no, yeah. it's a bad thing, that's right? So it tells thing. you that you've had water sitting, okay. and then we start to make formaldehydes, then we start to make methane, then we start to make sulfides, farty smells, bad smells, yeah? So plant roots can't deal with alcohol, so you'll see roots that go down and then stop. stop. So it'll yeah. be just a sharp layer and then you'll see mottles in there and it tells you water's come up, alcohol started to be produced. So you think about when you're like in the city and you see how trees can push up pavement, mm -hmm. right? It's not a physical penetration that's the problem, it's um, mm. alcohols and things like that. So <laughs> the property that I just mm. sold in March, we'd been there for seven years. We brought it knowing the soil was stuffed. And I was like, yay, it's really stuffed. Let's <laughs> see what we can do, right? So at six inch depth, we had a layer of a calcium silicate loess. Now this calcium silicate, people use it to quick set concrete. So a loess is a windblown product that had come over from mm. like Taupo and it had made basically a concrete layer deep in the soil. Mm -hmm. So what would happen mm -hmm. is water would perch when it was raining, so we'd have flooding and the soil would stink. And then in summer, the water would be underneath that layer and our soils would dry up and crack. Right. Like, Where's yeah. the layer? Is that the top of it's the a, soil it, or it is it was, down? It started at 25, so it started at six inches and it, it varied oh, okay. in depth. Like some places it's that, some places it's like that. And then it went into clay. I was like, okay, we want to see, can we do this and break it down without using ripping or mechanical intervention. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we did is we did diverse pastures. We did um, long grazing cell rotations. When we're doing horse breaking, we would actually come in with a biological stimulant to help open that soil up. So we're using horse breaking. We were uh, starting horses, breaking horses. All right. So horses would be bad horse breaking soil. Um, <laughs> so a horse would be in a cell like. 30 feet by 30 feet, all right? It would stay there for six weeks. You can imagine what it looks like. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so the minute that horse comes out, we put in liquid lime, a little bit of phosphate. So both of those things are helpful for your weeds, liquid lime and phosphate. And our vermicast and biological stimulants, whatever, but whatever it would take to open that soil up from that massive disturbance. Because horses can be very disturbing. Yeah. Um, all right, and then, so we did... And then we're doing biological stimulants across the whole property. We're looking at balancing our minerals. So it was a whole package deal. And when you talked about yesterday, we were talking about large scale. You guys have all the advantage in being small. We can move soil so fast in a small operation. So the principles we talked about yesterday, of course they apply in a small operation and we can do it faster. 
but you've got no excuse to not have just a woo. Anyway, so um, that's what we did. Now, by the time we left that property, that hard pan had gone. In some places, it was still there at about 800. Under the gateway, it was still there. So where we had ongoing sort of traffic and, yeah, we went, you know, the gateway still looked pretty messy. Um, was, the hard pan was still there. The breakdown of the hard pan was entirely biological. Entirely biological, mechanical. no mechanical. So you could see, you could cut it open and you could see plant roots. So we used chicory, it's like one of my favorites. Uh, chicory, grass roots down there and worms. All that movement, all that mixing. So you'd see that white um, lurse would come up into the top layers. So we're just seeing all of this cycling. So our calcium levels lifted, which I mean, we were putting liquid calcium on, but our calcium kept coming up. Okay, so that's something that we can look at doing. I just wanted to tell you a story and we'll keep going. Yeah. All right, soil color. So what we do is we dig a hole here and then go somewhere that's undisturbed. And I'm imagining that probably side of the car maybe sometimes it's hard you don't know what people's history's been yeah or under a fence line you want to have somewhere that's undisturbed and look at the difference in color you want your sort of do you want it darker or lighter darker. Darker. darker for sure yeah yeah in some places really dark some places oh my goodness i've been just like you want to cry after you've done this oh. yeah. all right how many worms so we want to see a minimum you want to see definitely a minimum of 25, but this says excellence above 45, right? And with multiple species. As well. in, in, a, in how large? In a 200 by 200. So, so eight, 8 inch by 8 inch. Whoa! Eight inch by eight inch about 45. So I've got a farmer that I work with, 200 worms per spade. Generally about 100 worms per spade, and he shows everybody. He had someone come and fix his power lines, and he's like, come and check out my worms. Yeah. <laughs> and the, they dug and they counted 100, and the, the, the linesman was like, you're just pulling my chain. Then made him dig another hole. Same thing, 100 worms. It's brilliant. Wow. Yeah, I have not, I have yet to find a worm. I just saw one. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I should have pulled it aside.